currently work for Te Atai Cultural Training Centre as the manager of Te Atane Station. Um, I'm going to briefly talk to you a wee bit about Te Atai because we not only are farmers, we also have students on our farms, so we're a training organisation as well. Uh, briefly about Te Atane. Oh, sorry. And also a bit about Te Atane and why we're also involved in the beef poisoning test. So Te Atane was purchased by Ngāti Kānunu in May of 2013 of uh, the Herrick and Alworthy families. Um, they offered to Te Atane to lease, we've got a 10-year lease on the property. Um, for us, it's a perfect fit, as is given that the Airways focus on the property's cultural significance and the interest in giving young New Zealanders an opportunity to further their skills or gain new skills in the agricultural industry. Uh, Te Atai itself was started in 1919 by the generosity of Sir William Perry, who set his land up in, in, a, fr in a trust as a training ground for men returning from World War I. To, it's also to stem, to stem, uh, demonstrate good farm practice, disseminate good farm practices and upskilling young farmers. It started with 10 to 12 students. We've now increased to 140 students based in Masterton and 2,500 nationwide. <clears throat> the main campus is based in Masterton. At the Masterton campus, the students can study in uh, Level 3 Sheep and Beef and Dairy, Level 4 Sheep and Beef and Dairy, which is our second year programme. They can also go on and do the Massey Diploma in Agriculture and also do the Lincoln Diploma in Agriculture extramurally. Um, we have eight campuses nationwide, from, ranging from Northland to Southland. Um, Teotay itself manages uh, 16 or we have 16 farms which we manage, lease or own, which consist of about 50,000 sheep and beef stock units. We're milking about 3,000 cows and we're also involved in research projects on these farms with um, Beef and Lamb Genetics, Mass University, Alliance Group, Abacus Bio, Focus Genetics, Farm IQ Systems, Ag Research and also Ravensdown. So the average age of our student is basically 16 to 9 years, 19 years of old. They are 30% of them are female, 50% of them are from an urban background, so we're talking with the main pool actually coming out of Auckland. Uh, 10 to 12 are Māori or Pacifica background. The students are broken up, of the 140 students, there's 50 sheep beef students, level three. They're broken up into groups of seven <coughs> and rotated around the farms. We have three sheep beef farms in Masterton, plus they also do agri-vehicles, uh, agrochemicals and also lectures. For us it's about real training on real farms. Each of the Tarate farms are a commercial unit. They have been have to work within financial guidelines which have been set out by our board. Um, the students are integrated into everything that's happening on farm. Uh, it could be drenching, mustering, pasture measuring, weighing, body condition scoring, involved in these trials that are going on. The advantage of having a place like Tautani is it's the scale, they get to muster big mobs, 6,000 ewes, 400 cows, mustering bigger paddocks, able to crutch 200 sheep in a day, we're not being able to go home until the job's finished. It also offers a wow factor to them. Tatani Station is a pretty cool place to be. Um, the students love being there, they get pretty, some pretty cool experiences out there, so it's great. For us too, attitude and work ethic is the two most important qualities we try and install in our students. They're almost just about, just about more important than the basic farm skills. Um, if you get these two qualities right, the quality of work comes after that. Um, <clears throat> also the three P's, position, pressure and patience, which are our core skills which we teach when we're handling livestock. It's all about, our students do a lot of walking to start off with, it's not about watching us muster a paddocks, they're actually doing it themselves on foot. Get, they learn how to get themselves in the right position how much to learn how to put pressure on stock, how to take it off, how to control flow through gateways and stuff like that. So, excuse me, I'm just <clears throat> It's also, we're teaching more, we're not just teaching li um, farm skills, we're actually teaching life skills as well. Um, my wife, Claire, is in charge of the pastoral care side of things. The students are, are rostered on to the cookhouse, so they're in charge of cooking for that day. Um, they've got to prepare lunch and dinner. Uh, they've got to keep the place tidy. They've got to do some baking, and also we try and create a really family atmosphere. So if there's any issues, the students, this is an opportunity for the students to own up, uh, express themselves. Is there something going wrong? Tautani Station itself is 
3,375 hectares effective. Um, we are sea level to 300 metres. We have 12 k of coastline, which is basically a straight drop into the sea. Um, summer dry, winter wet, we get most of our, our average rainfall is about 1,200 mils, which falls most in the winter. Um, we're still having a very challenging season at the moment. Um, we are steep to medium hill country. Our average paddock size is 48 hectares. We have 100 hectares of flats, which 16, 60 hectares of that is in plantain. Um, we're growing around about five and a half to six ton a year um, with 30,000 stock units. So 18,000 ewes, 5,300 ewe hoggets, um, 450 mixed age cows, 150 R3 heifers, 187 R2 heifers and 195 R1 heifers. We've sort of got a ratio of 80 to 20 sheep to, sheep to cattle. The cattle side of our operation is <clears throat> we're basically Angus Genetics. They used to use a Hereford or crisscross with a Hereford bull up to eight years ago. So about a quarter of our cows have still got the white face or Hereford genetics in there. We're looking for a moderate size, moderate frame size cow that can get in calf every year. Calved as a heifer, get in calf every year after that. Produce a live calf to weaning at a good weaning rate around that 2, 30 kilo mark can bounce back from a hard winter or a drought, which we quite often get with us, and also have a quiet temperament, as this is quite crucial for us with the students handling these cows. We don't want them chasing the old young students out of the cattle yards or anything like that. So, Our cows are usually mated on the 1st of December. Um, this year we brought it forward with the whole AI process, so I'll talk about the AI thing in a minute. But um, Our cows are mated 1st of December. Uh, we mob them up to about 120 in their mating mobs, they made it for two cycles only, and we put about three bulls in there, three bulls in with them. Um, our bulls at this stage are coming from Twin Oak, Angus, Roger and Susan Haywood from South Canterbury. With our heifers, they made it on the 20th of November, so we made all our heifers. Um, <clears throat> we tried, depends on the season grass growth, but we try and have a target mating rate of about 380 kilos to 400 kilos. Um, our heifer bulls come from Y Group, Angus, Billy Falloon. And we depends on the season and the feeding situation, but we try and make them as one mob at a ratio of one to 30. For us, we're still fine tuning our cattle policy. Um, we've only had the farm for two years, or managing it for two years, so we've had two pretty extreme seasons, like the 13, 14 season, an exceptional season for grass growth, the 14, 15 season has been very challenging. Um, so with our management of our cows, <coughs> at winning time our cows are drafted on basic condition score, on that condition score 6. The light cows go with the R3 heifers and are rotated around. The heavier cows, which we usually get about 400 cows, are put behind a wire and made to clean up. Um, so we do it in, for cleaning up a paddock, we try and do it in blocks. This helps to keep the condition score on the cow, plus makes it quite a good job of what we're trying to achieve for cleaning the pasture. Um, all cows are set stocked with a ewes for calving. Heifers are calved behind a wire. Um, we're weighing and body condition scoring now with three to four times a year. So starting to manage our herds on the body condition score, which is going to be quite interesting. Animal health. Um, all heifers are BVD blood tested and vaccinated into our herd. Uh, cows get copper injection twice a year. Weaners are drenched every six weeks. We try not to use any porons, we use orals. Uh, if a cow needs to be drenched pre-calving, we use an injection. Um, liver samples are taken from the cows, <coughs> when they, or the dry cows when they go to work, just to work out a mineral status, and we use mag capsules if needed. The beef progeny test, why do we get involved, um, and what we hope to get out of it? Um, for us, our heads are already in this space. We do a lot of research with doing or doing a beef cow efficiency trial with Massey. Um, also, the three other sheep and beef farms have research projects on them. We're doing the sheep CPT trial at Coromico, one of our other farms. For us, this is industry good research. It's about how do we actually improve the whole industry itself, um, exposing our students. So it's exposing our students to the latest technology. They can see the process from AI of the cow right through the calf being born, matching up to its parentage, and then decision process from then on. Also, it's about, for us, it's about educating the wider farming community. You know, the benefits from doing a, a trial like this, how can we get that information into the wider community? Um, for, the, for, the, for us, the same as what Richard said, you know, we found the AI process pretty straightforward. Um, 
was going to be a pretty daunting uh, process. When, but until we got a plan in place, we, we chose the same thing as Richard, the three yarding thing, and it actually became quite streamlined. Once the cows got used to coming to the yards, it actually became pretty simple. Um, with our results, the biggest thing for us, we learnt from our, our process, there's a jump about 4%. So the cows that were condition score 7 and above, there's a 4% increase in hold rate just on that. So that, for me, is quite interesting. So it's about how can we actually use AI in a commercial herd now. Um, the learning the benefits of condition scoring and managing our cow herd based on condition score. Uh, <clears throat> also interesting to learn what EBVs suit our operation. We are a store operation, we're a summer dry operation, so what females perform in our environment. Um, a better understanding of how to get the best of our cow herd. Um, we are also learning, <coughs> this is happening on our farm, so we're actually seeing first hand of the influence this is making to our operation, so this, which is pretty exciting for us. It's about building relationship to us too, because we are summer dry, we're the finisher. Um, we know what we need to perform. It's also trying to fight, figure out what they need to perform in terms of their, what stock they want to purchase and things like that. How do we add value to their operation? Trying to create a win-win um, situation for all parties. So I've mentioned briefly before, we've done some uh, research, beef cow, <coughs> beef cow efficiency trial stuff with Massey already. Um, so they currently, this is based on, Peter, they are, sorry about this, this trial is looking at the phenotypic effects of body condition score and live weight on reproductive success. So that currently this is based on the PD data, but will include calf performance when, with the beef progeny trial as well. So at the moment our R2, R3 and R4 heifers are been involved in this. So these three lines <coughs> show live weight from heifers that were uh, started off in the project and it's basically what it's showing is that the cows that lose the most weight pre-calving seem to drop out of a herd a lot sooner. So they're there for, sorry about this. <coughs> yeah. they, they show the live weight. The, the heifers that seem to drop out of system early, they don't make the second PD, are the cows that lose the most weight over that pre-calving period. So that's, it's, it's, we did over two age groups and <coughs> they've had the same interesting results. So for me, it's, for me, this whole EB, the beef project trial is pretty exciting, some of the information and stuff we're going to get out of it. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to some of the results and things like that, so it'd be great. Thank you.